let's have a conversation now about uh, leaders, times of crisis, and what's expected of leaders and leadership. We talk about this regularly. I mean, on a daily basis, it's a, we have been in a pandemic. We have been facing a health crisis in this country. We have faced economic crisis in the country. We have faced crisis of leadership even. So what's the position of a leader? What's the role of a leader? What's the responsibility of a leader and the expectation of leaders in such times of crisis? Joining us to have this conversation is Winnie Odinga. Winnie is a CEO of Brickhouse Council. So yeah, she's Winnie Odinga. So let's just get that off the way, all right? Winnie Odinga is the daughter of ODM leader Raila Odinga. But she's here in her personal capacity, not here to speak at you on behalf of family. You know, she here is here because she also has her own thoughts. If you actually go to her Twitter handle, Winnie underscore Odinga, you will see she expresses herself expressively. Just two days ago, a day ago, she tweeted, three jobs of an MP are R-O-L. R, represent the people. O, oversight institutions. L, legislate on behalf of the people. She goes on to say, there is not a single Nairobi MP in the 12th parliament that has taken any one of these jobs seriously. The city is drowning in filth, both metaphorically and literally. She, started, she goes on to say, I started a program hiring the women in Kilimani who sit on corners to sweep the roads, slash grass along the street, collect small, small litter. They were arrested because they did not have a license to clean from the county and company not registered. A license to clean. Exclamation mark. <laughs> Winnie's rant ends there. But this is not it. Her pinned tweet posted on the 4th of February 2019 says, In every major airport on this continent, there is a dingy room filled with fellow Africans. How in the age of the AU are African governments terming fellow Africans illegal aliens while foreigners can enter the continent visa-free? Good questions. Uh, but, oh, no, not just good. <laughs> Riveting <laughs> questions. Uh, I would venture to say that they have a very direct and purposed political arrow. Mm. They, 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 they are armed. And why are they armed? Because they are valid, simple facts that one should actually ask. Because I would assume it's a straightforward thing. Mm. You're an African. You live in this continent. You have an issue. You cross over to the other... And it becomes something that the AU, an important organization like the AU, wants to discuss and talk about and make an issue. Remember, make an issue of solution. Mm -hmm. Do we hear of the solutions that they bring to bear on this? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you mention the issue of women sitting in certain corners within Kilimani, actually, I see those ladies all the time. I mean, and it appears somebody actually did something about it after all. Yep. Yes. So somebody taking up this particular, uh, you know, job and saying, how, how can I, how can I come and work with these women and help them get the work that they deserve? And then Kanjo comes and says, oh, you don't have a license. Oh, you don't have a to registered sweep. company. Oh, you don't have all this and the other. You should be formalized. And she went off. I responded to that tweet. And I, I agreed with what she was saying in terms of leadership and the role of representation and oversight and everything else. But and I, I, I tweeted and responded and said, I agree, but I think actually the people that we should be looking at are the members of the county assembly of Nairobi, because those are the ones that uh, make the bylaws of Nairobi. Those are the ones that do all these things. We're going to have one-on-one -on -one with Winnie on this. Winnie, welcome to the show. Good morning. Good to have you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me this morning. So let's just start off with this one. You are clearly uh, at your wit's end by the time you're going to tweet and say, <laughs> come on, really? But why did you pick on members of parliament? You said not a single member of parliament in Nairobi. Let's count them. There are 17 constituencies in Nairobi. We have one woman rep in Nairobi. We have one senator in Nairobi, 19 in total. Plus now we have some very many nominated MPs. Um, I, I, I think I was speaking really from the point of being uh, an Nairobi resident mm -hmm. um, who uh, has, yeah, you're right, just fed up with the state of the city. I mean, if you, if, if, if you go around and you see what the city looks like these days, the city is filled with filth. We, we, we don't have a governor. Um, our 
MCAs have failed to show leadership, and there are certain things that were all, uh, all the MPs in this country who all live in Nairobi City must now rally together and take responsibility and say, hey, this has gone too far. We need to do something about the state and condition of our city. When, let me ask you this question. If they were to take their duties seriously or if they were to begin taking their duties seriously, what then would we expect to see that would demonstrate that indeed they are taking their duties seriously? I mean, there's certain things you can do. For example, when we talk of um, uh, roads, um, incom incomplete roads or road projects, for example, you look at Ngong Road, um, which was built over two years ago, and till this day, uh, there's still no road marking, there's still no street lighting, there's still no proper drainage. I mean, uh, I don't know if you've ever used the, the Dagoretti area just before Jamuri in the night. Uh, people cross that road like they're playing Kati. I mean, it's complete mayhem, it's complete darkness. And so Parliament has the ability to call whoever is in charge, whether it's the Minister of Roads or whatever it is, and say, hey, why has this not been done? It's been two years. Um, the condition of this thing is not done. This is a national government road. Why have you not completed it? And, and so I look at Parliament in that regard as uh, failing in its oversight, um, failing to protect its citizens' needs. And um, uh, that is why I, I'm looking at Parliament. Eric mentioned the bringing in of the uh, MCAs. What role then would you see the MCAs playing in, 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 in this particular situation that you've mentioned? Because after all, they are the members of parliament of the Nairobi County. No, it's true. In fact, let me give you an example. The, the other day I was um, trying to build a border border stage right near my parents' home in Karen there. Um, there are a few border borders and, you know, they're just hanging out about, it's hot, it rains, whatever. So I tried to build a border border stage. Uh, I called my, the area MCA, Mr. Mberia, a very nice man. And he got back to me and told me that in order to put up a border border stage, that I must write to the DG of Kura. Hmm. And I, I, I told him, no, I don't write to the DG of Kura, I'm just a citizen. This is even something you should be able to do in your capacity. And so after a little bit of back and forth, he agreed to write the letter. We have since gotten a response. And there's also that sort of uh, disrespectful attitude that many people take towards our MCAs. Uh, our MCAs then have no recourse. And um, so it leaves the citizenry uh, just disabled, disarmed, with finding themselves with nowhere to go. What, what did the D, what was the DG's response? I, I was actually waiting for you to tell us this. Maybe you call him and ask him because I still haven't received it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't but know. I think it, it also points now to the, the fact he is here now. Um, a resident of this particular ward approaches their representative, and this is the member of the county assembly, and says, "I think at this particular area we need this service." Mm -hmm. It is then the job of the representative. To take it up and say, I've heard, let me even maybe engage other members of the ward and hear whether they agree with what, you say, what you're saying. Maybe your neighbors don't actually feel that there should be a border border stage there. Maybe even the border border riders would, do, do not agree that there should be a border border stage right there. But the, the job of the MCA should have been, okay, let me engage with the people. Let me follow it up. If it requires some action, the action that needs to be taken by the county executive or the action that needs to be taken by the Kura, the Kenya Urban Roads Association, and not association, but authority, authority. that should have been the job that he does. But he's giving it back to you like, ah, come on, take your stage, eh? no, I'm be a Kura. <laughs> in fact, I'm not even a resident of that uh, ward. I don't even live in that constituency. Ah, okay. <laughs> um, in fact, I, I was listening to the fellow before me, the Rotary Club. I was just, I've just signed on because that sounds like a, a club I should be a part of. Mm -hmm. Yes, in a perfect world, that is exactly what is meant to happen. When we had a council and the mayor of the city of Nairobi, that is what is meant to happen. You're able to engage with your councillor and that is taken to the next level. The problem we have in Nairobi is, uh, first of all, the, the size and the number of population of people living in certain wards. That it is untenable to expect the MCA um, in a, a divided house 
to be able to achieve all these things. Now, if, if you look at the MCAs, for example, in Nairobi, we don't have a governor. So the MCAs in our party system all look up to the Member of Parliament. Now, the Member of Parliament has more powers when the MCA is stuck to call these people into Parliament and question them. Right now in Nairobi, we have a very devastating issue of street children. And every time schools close, the streets are packed with these street children. Um, they're uh, being hit left and right by vehicles. They're inhaling dangerous fumes. These people are dying. And the other day we had uh, somebody appointed to the rehabilitation of street families committed by the Minister of Labor. Parliament has the ability to person, you know, even call the CS or the PS of Labor and say, hey, this is getting out of hand. What do we have in place for these street families and for them, for something for them to do? But further than that, members of parliament have changed the meaning of what their jobs are. Mm. <laughs> they got very into this business of money, campaigning on money, and so the populace expects that from them. So you find a member of parliament who's changed his job to bursaries. Um, uh, and, and funerals, donating at funerals. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So, who else? So, who's been the job of the Member of Parliament? Yeah. <laughs> Parliament actually has the ability to call these people into order. And why I say uh, it's Parliament is because I, I, I live in Dagoretti North. I have an issue here that affects me in this ward. Mm. But there are many other wards here. Dagoretti North starts in Kangwari and ends at Haile Selassie Avenue. Each of those wards have different appendages and different issues. And it's for the member of parliament to come out, because he lives here, they live here, mm -hmm. and see what's happening and make changes. I mean, what we're talking about is not assembling a, a, a rocket. What, what we need is basic service delivery in the city. You can't drive around the city to parliament every day and mm -hmm. ignore the fact that this is the state of the city. That obviously doesn't take a lot, We need It doesn't really, if we're going to be honest here, if you even look at it without even understanding the intricate workings of the house and all of this, it actually doesn't take a lot to get done. Because we're talking about basic things that if you did today, did tomorrow, you could actually probably have the city running with some kind of semblance of organization. It can happen. So, number one, it's not happening. Number two, there are clearly people who've been given this job to do that are not doing it and uh, doing something else, like you've said, uh, quite often doing these other things. At the back end of this, they are frustrated citizens of the city, and you can even take it out towards the rest of the country. Frustrated people who should have things running in a certain manner and are not. What do we see the solutions to be? Because if for me, if the person is not doing their job and they're being paid to do it and we don't have results, then it's quite obvious that this person should then be removed. What do you think the solutions to what we are seeing right now should be? I think you said it. Mm. I don't want to say it. Mm. I think you said it. Um, we have the ability to recall members of parliament. You have the ability to vote members of parliament out. Um, you also have you should have the ability to have access to your member of parliament where, or um, a sort of ombudsman mm. where you can report uh, this negligence because this is negligence on a massive scale in this town. I mean, best performing is, uh, I think, a D, a D minus. And uh, let's also not forget that parliamentarians are also given something called CDF, which in our system of government should not even really occur. It should be a county government um, uh, function. Yep. So what happens with CDF? There are no social amenities, there are no parks, there are no... Uh, I mean, I keep going back to these children who have uh, closed schools or schools have been shut down and there's nothing to do. Uh, you go to... Um, I live near Ngong Road, so I reference it a lot. You go to Ngong Road near Ligi Ndogo there and the children there begging on the streets day in and day out. And across the road is Ligindogo. Why can the members of parliament pay for them to go to Ligindogo? Mm -hmm. Why can't you build basketball courts? I've built several, I can tell you. It doesn't cost more than 200,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. why, well, why can't we do other social things instead of WhatsApp groups? Oh, Siju Matanga Ikoapa, we have to pay for this, we have to do that. It's, it, we, they've forgotten 
the social responsibility to the people. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. But really, I just want to bring you back to the importance of this position in the constitution called member of the county assembly. And this is the ward rep actually in the constitution. Some of these things that we're talking about, the social amenities in Nairobi, the um, issue of having children, street children, and, and what we need to do about them. These ones, by the way, first port of call is the county assembly of Nairobi. Yes, we can come up with all those reasons and say, okay, Nairobi does not have a governor. Absolutely not. Nairobi has an acting governor. Nairobi has a sworn deputy governor. Nairobi has a Nairobi Metropolitan Services Director General and Office. Nairobi has all these things. Nairobi has a budget that has been approved and has come from the National Treasury to Nairobi City County. The MCAs in Nairobi are busy. They have a role and a direct responsibility to play here. Now, your member of parliament, and it's very true, your member of parliament, for example, for Dagoretti North, yes, has the oversight role, but within Dagoretti North, there are, what, about five or six wards? Those wards have MCAs, and they sit in Nairobi. What is their job? Uh, Eric, I am not disagreeing with you of the role of an MCA. I agree thoroughly. What I am discussing today is the oversight part of the members of parliament. Mm -hmm. There's a leadership crisis and everybody keeps trying to say it's so and so. You go to your MCA, you say they can't do it. Go to your MP, you go this way. Everybody keeps passing the buck. And, and what it really is, is you're, you're watching a plane crash and you have five pilots and everybody's saying, this is not my flight. Um, Nairobi needs rescuing. And the members of parliament in Nairobi have the capacity to rally themselves, there's 17 of them, and go to government institutions, walk into government offices and say, my constituency doesn't have this, why don't I have this yet? Mm. My constituency needs this. My constituency needs this. We, we have uh, border borders going out of control. These border borders are dying every day. And the biggest um, suppliers of border borders are MPs themselves. So if it's not about them doing anything, the least they can do is legislate and make ro roles, uh, sorry, laws and ru rules to regulate these border border riders. I mean, there's so many issues that we can go into. But, but the fact that nobody wants to take responsibility for everything, everybody mm -hmm. says, ah, these border borders. How long will we talk about that? So do, do I, if I hear you right, are you saying that these leaders whom we refer to as members of parliament, elected leaders and MCAs, have completely declined to carry out the duties that are, they are mandated to? Is that what you're saying? I don't want to say declined. <laughs> or okay, um, can we use the word reluctant then? I think so. I believe they've become reluctant and and, and um, perhaps overwhelmed. Uh -huh. Perhaps overwhelmed. Why would you say they're overwhelmed, uh, Winnie? No, I don't know why they're overwhelmed. They're busy doing other things. I don't know why they're, they're overwhelmed uh, with doing other business that's <laughs> actually not <laughs> their core responsibility. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. You know, every time you, these MPs, you hear them going on benchmarking trips, benchmarking to uh, far west and eastern countries, first world countries, and then they come back and they do nothing with it. What's the point of benchmarking for that? If that's the case, benchmarking Zimbabwe or in, in Somalia, and, and because that's where you're taking us. Mm. Go see what those cities are when there's complete negligence, complete lack of responsibility by government. That is where we're heading. So all these members of parliament these benchmarking trips we want to see tangible things in the city we want this is very simple things we're discussing we're talking about um street lighting a member of that is not even an mc a member of parliament can call in whoever it is now kura whoever you know nobody even knows with all these departments and ask why is this why is this major highway still dark why uh, do we not have these uh, sidewalks for our people to walk on why do we not have these things? Because right now you, you, you'll have a road. Um, you're told it's Kura, it's Kenha that's doing it. The sidewalk apparently belongs to nobody. You're told it's the county government that's doing it. Mm -hmm. The county government is telling you, um, no, we, us, we only do the drainage. So you have to do that. And, and you're just going back and forth. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the failure is in government institutions. And the role of parliament is to check those government institutions. Somebody, the failure is not on the part of the MCA. 
we have actually um, you know lit a, a light and, and, and a fire under the seats of members of parliament for a while on this show and every time we speak to members of parliament we ask them so why are you not doing what you should be doing they talk about parliament being captured by the executive especially in this particular um, administration where the leader of the majority party in parliament has shaken hands with the leader of the minority party in parliament and so all members of parliament seem to be speaking or you know with the same voice there's that capture do you think that capture also has played a role in what you're talking about that sort of reluctance or inability or overwhelming uh, things by parliamentarians well, if they're speaking in the same voice, why don't they speak in the same voice in terms of developing the city? I mean, I think that's neither here nor there. That is politics. And national politicians will do national politicking and let them do. But local politicians must deliver local services uh, to the people. Uh, I don't... <laughs> I have to check myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and check yourself it's a little okay. bit and then check yourself and check for a few minutes we'll get to <laughs> i must be politically correct mm. I, 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 I members of parliament if you talk to any member of parliament i talk to myself one of the things that the brick house council does is lobbying members of any member of parliament who tell me laws are passed there as they're drinking tea in the cafeteria uh, i mean passing laws and bylaws in that place happens like this mm. <laughs> so uh, I, I believe that's an excuse okay on political matters, yes, the um, party members must toe the party line. But on legislative matters, um, members of parliament must report an answer to the citizenry directly. And they must offer those services. And it cannot be an excuse that I can't do this because of this. Then, then get out. <laughs> Ideally, that actually sounds very good. Let's take a break and then we come back. We're having a conversation with Winnie Odinga. She's the CEO of the Brick House Council. The conversation is leaders are seen in times of crisis, focusing primarily on members of parliament. And this is both the National Assembly and the Senate and the job that they're supposed to do. You know, leadership, oversight and everything else. Are they doing it well? This is the Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. In the room with you this and every week, the morning is C.T. Muga, Ndu Oko. Eric Latif. And joining us on the line is Winnie Odinga, the CEO of Brickhouse Council. She basically is an activist on matters governance. And I think this thing just runs in the blood. It's in the DNA from all the days of before independence, the days of Adonija Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, to granddaughter Winnie. It's there. Speaking, shooting from the hip, saying this parliament basically is at a point where we cannot, we are not getting ROI. We have invested heavily on members of parliament on a regular basis, on a daily basis. We are actually spending a lot of money to maintain parliament. But the job that parliamentarians should be doing, we're not getting what they should be doing on a, on a daily basis. We talked about this just the other day. Kenyans on Twitter lighting a fire and making a lot of noise at the IMF and then asking ourselves, but, 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 but when you talk about the money that has been borrowed, and has not been utilized or we don't know the utilization of that money in some cases we actually have seen some scandals parliamentarians in their oversight role have failed you know it is of interest mm. we talked about it and, and said that the imf would be deaf to oh no the imf responded mm -hmm. they actually responded to the noise if i may refer to it or that the Kenyans made and they explained why it is that that loan is important and how it is that it's going to keep away the wolves that are actually threatening to overrun this particular country. They responded. Mm -hmm. So yes, if the MPs, now these are locals whom we voted for, mm. were actually doing what they were supposed to do. Perhaps some oversight. Mm. Perhaps some of these issues that bring about the discussions about loans and, and the management of money in this country would be of a different nature and not the ones that we keep talking about over and over and over again. Mm. But then the question I want to ask Winnie is, Winnie, at what point do such concerns uh, become a subject of social concern and at what point do they become political? In your, in your view. Uh, well, I believe all these problems have become... Um, <coughs> one of the biggest problems... Uh, that we're seeing, one of the biggest indicators that we're seeing of a uh, citizenry that has lost all faith in their leadership is, is, is that Twitter 
um, uh, or hashtag or petition or, or whatever it is, or, or all the things that we see on social media. Um, the people have just completely given up hope. So, <laughs> I mean, I mean this, <laughs> to see people talk directly to the IMF <laughs> on a national scale because they have no faith, uh, not only in the government, but once the money reaches here, who it will go to, where it will go to, and uh, I mean, I think we've reached a very sad and dangerous place in this country. I think we've reached a crisis of, of leadership. Hmm. The, the dangerous place, um, it looks like that spot between where people are fed up and then where people actually begin to revolt. I think this is the spot where a lot of the revolutions that we've seen around countries, people got to the point whereby they were fed up. But then it needed some action to actually show this fed upness, if we can call it that. And then you have people spilling out uh, into the streets that we've seen in many other countries and saying, you know what, we're fed up, yes, but we need to actually see something being done about this. Do you think Kenyans will get to that point whereby, yes, we're fed up and we can't take it anymore and we're going to start to demand for change more than an activist here, an activist there, but people rallying together and saying, in as much as we are fed up, we now need something done about this. Are we, is Kenya at that spot? Are Kenyans at that spot where you say fed up now, let's see something done? I think human nature dictates that as an inevitability. Mm -hmm. I don't believe we're there at this moment. Um, Kenyans are very quite um, protective of their country and, mm -hmm. and um, really only use that as a means of last resort, yes. But certainly, uh, we've, ha we've seen countries all over the world uh, that people thought were prospering and doing very well. I mean, the Arab Spring started on Twitter, mm -hmm. an organization of Twitter, of something as fast as that, certainly if things continue moving in a negative direction, if um, nobody shows uh, leadership or, or even the basic of services, uh, nature abhors a vacuum. Mm. So, and I don't want to be told I've, uh, <laughs> I've begun a process. <laughs> I'm trying to answer your question as best I can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not beginning it, basically. You're, you're, just, you're just speaking what, what other people, many other people have spoken. And that's why we're in even saying... I, 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 I really wish I had put a disclaimer for myself that the views expressed by Winnie Odinga belong to Winnie Odinga alone. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, and that's an, Nobody that's an, else should claim them. That's an important disclaimer. And that's why we're saying we want, we want to open up the phone lines on 0719-012-600. Because a number of things that you've said... One, we are facing a crisis of leadership. Just because of mainly focusing on the National Assembly and the Senate and Parliament and the, the role of Parliament, that is representation, oversight, legislation, and feeling, you know, they have fallen short. You're saying the best score you could give them is a D minus. I personally agree with you. Do other people agree with you that it's a, a, about a crisis of leadership at that point, 0719, let's hear from them. The other thing that, that comes into, and, and it's a reality of our politics, is our, our members of parliament, our MCAs, our governors, look up to the other senior leaders in their political parties. So when you talk about crisis of leadership, does it start from the very top, from a leader of a party, coming down to the members of the party, those who've been elected to represent the party? Um, I mean... If your tea girl in the office doesn't bring tea today, do you go to the CEO and say, Mary didn't bring the tea today? Everybody <laughs> has a role in this institution. Mm. Everybody has an individual role. I, I mean, if you even look at parliament bylaws, uh, MPs meet on uh, Tuesday, uh, no, no, Wednesday, Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Mm. The rest of the time they're meant to be in the constituencies. Mm. And MPs from outside of Nairobi every weekend are out in the constituencies because if you don't, you'll have an unfortunate situation like the MP in Kisumu whose, whose house was burnt and his parents were lynched. The mm -hmm. villagers will come for you. They know where you live. Um, so there's that sort of check and balance mm -hmm. outside there in the constituency. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, there's no visibility of, of our members of parliament. I mean, I, I can ask any of you, where is your constituency office? Where do you find your MP? When's the last time you spoke to him? When's the last time you told him, good job? 
when's the last time your MP, he or she, impressed you in the city of Nairobi? Hmm. Actually, uh, it, 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 it is your fellow constituent. <laughs> Did you know that, first of all? <laughs> Actually, I, 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 it's a revelation <laughs> to me because I know my MP by I, name. I work in Kibra. <laughs> I know my MP by name. My MC, I have no clue who that person is. Mm. None, none, none whatsoever. Mm. As for constituency office, I think the closest I get to that is I know the chief's office. But it's, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's interesting that you say that, Winnie, mm. because I mean, I, we, we, the road in the area where we live is in the, it's a, it's not a road, right? And so mm -hmm. we got so tired over and over people having to f fix their vehicles. So we said, you know, let's go to the county office to ask, and they said, okay, we'll we'll get to it, kind of thing. So we had to, you know contribute money to at least have the road graded so people could use the road to get to and from where they were going. And it was very interesting because we had the Member of Parliament and the MCA contribute to the kitty as well. They used the road and they felt, okay, you know what, rather it's than true. lobby for this thing to actually get fixed on a national or even county level, they're saying, you know what, let's give the 1,500 shillings and contribute but to no, this kitty. And then they kept quiet about it thereafter. Should that issue not have been addressed at the time the estate was being built? You're putting up an estate. Mm. Exactly. And there are all these people are going to live it there. It started from there. Trust me. Surely, you. shouldn't there be a road that is not passable? Should there be a decent road? Motorable road. And all. Uh, that road borders an yes. international uh, airport in a major hub city. Yes, I mean, surely. How <laughs> did that person end up having those houses built, finished, mm. completed, and there was no road that actually, uh, a passable road that leads to it? There's no zoning, there's no... Um, uh, again, I mean, failure by the county assembly. Let's go to the phone <laughs> lines because I have a number of uh, people on the line. Charity in Ruiro, good morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm fine. How are you guys? Hi. We are Very well, nice. thank you. Okay. Now, um, I think we are asking questions to somebody who cannot actually answer. Mm. Because... Um, to be honest, this is the, the, the mistake that we do. I don't think she has ever, or she knows what it means to work. And this is, the, this is what we are, we are, we have to do away with benefits, families, uh. because they don't know the problems that we have down here. So there is no way they can give us a solution. It is ridiculous. We are doing mistakes over and over again. All right. Since you clearly uh, state that you are not a dynasty, as we call it, how would you address some of these issues that Winnie has been trying to address? Because you are not dynasty. And I assume you also understand the plight of people who are not dynasty. I think it is a time in, in our country that we choose people who have really they know problem from the from the ground. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> do, we are making do, do you suppose that members of parliament, all of yeah. them that have been elected from the two hundred and ninety constituencies, yes, are all dynasties? No, they're not all dynasties, but I don't think they have. They have. Uh, we, we choose. We choose our leaders mm. based on on basis of you know the party they are in mm -hmm. and the and the the tribe they are in mm. that is the most uh, the most uh what can i say for Bamat, the problems we have here okay so what the message actually i'm hearing you saying charity is let's let's yeah. let's look deeper as we yeah. as we elect our leaders let's see a leader yeah. who resonates with our problems but yeah. the question is how deeper mm. is this deeper because if you look at the turnover of, of our elected leaders it is high it tells you that it just the tells you that we're oh, just changing, oh, but oh. we are not changing. We are not looking deep enough. How do we know they're not looking deep enough? Because that rate, not. over seventy percent. We're not. So charity is. She's saying. a perfect example. You brought somebody who doesn't even know problem. She's but not. Her, she's not no, an elected. She's not an elected, elected leader. leader. And then surely okay. charity. How do you know that she does not have any understanding of problems? She does not know how to. How do her. you know? Has charity? she ever slept hungry? Have you? Has she ever slept hungry? Have you? Yes. Okay. Now, because of sleeping hungry, Charity, if you were elected a member of parliament for Riro, yes, what would you do different? What I'll do different? Yes. I'll work with the people. How? 
you put me there, then I'm going to show you how. All right. Ah, sawa. Mm. Okay. okay. So, thank you, Charity. Thank you for calling. Let's hear from Anthony Mombasa. Do I get, a, do I get a, a right of response? Or yes, you yes, you'll, res- you'll respond to all of them. Let's just first, first of all pick a number. Uh, and then Anthony uh, Mombasa, good morning. Good morning, how are you? Very well. City, how are you? I am very well, Anthony. Thank you for asking. And how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Ndu, yes. how are you? Very well, thank you. I congratulate you for pronouncing my name very well. And Madam Winnie, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? <laughs> Mzuri sana. First, before I comment, I'd just like to flash back to yesterday a little bit. Mm. As we were discussing, Pale Kenya Metufikisha, somebody parked his car kwa bridge ya Nyali Bridge na akaruka, akaacha bibi yake kwa gari. Hapo ndipo shinda zimetufikisha. Mm-hmm. Come to today. Do you remember another Kikui proverb I gave you the other day? And I told you, ile godua dogolia itikinya giranyeki. Mm-hmm. When the leader limps, the rest won't fight greener pastures. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we elect leaders, the problem with Kenya, we've been electing tumbocrats. People who only made their stomachs. When they get there, when it comes to legislative, they sideline with which side of their bread is buttered. You saw it the other day with the MCAs. Most of the MCAs were vocal and critical about the BBI. But immediately they were offered the cars. They all sang one tune, regardless of what Wajiko wants. Mm. That's the biggest problem we have. And uh, I tend to concur with charity a bit. Mm. We have leaders up there who don't know what it is to sleep hungry. They've never experienced it. They don't know it. Maybe some of them have walked out there and seen the poverty. I won't uh, clearly say we need a dynasty. Whether she comes from that family, Mm -hmm. maybe out of her life, maybe she's been with people who know, who who are in abject poverty. Maybe she's met them. Mm -hmm. And she's seen how they are living. But Winnie is not on our government. She's not one of the decision makers. So we cannot pin her. We cannot blame her. We are talking about the leaders we have. Mm. When they make the, they come up with the solutions to some of the problems, especially what we are currently going on through now. Mm. If a leader knows how it pains to sleep hungry, some of these things they are, they've, they've come up with it should not have come. They should have come up with those things with solutions mm. to that person who has nothing to eat. So somebody yesterday was calling there and saying, we cannot just uh, put the country at risk just because some few people are going hungry. Seriously. So those people are going hungry, they should die to protect the others from the disease. Mm. Remember, Anthony, uh, one of the things we encourage on this show is for people to actually air out their views. That particular individual was airing out their views, and it is good that you're airing yours, and it's in contradiction to what he was saying. That's true. Let's go to another caller. Robert Inquale, good morning. Good morning, Situation Room team. Good morning, Good morning. Yes, thank you very much. This is my second time being on on air on your show. It's uh, a good uh, gesture. Asante sana for calling. And uh, I want to say that uh, I'm, uh, I work with the government. Mm-hmm. I want to say why, where. Mm-hmm. And I've gone, I've been on the ground for the last 14 years. Mm-hmm. I've visited places which are very remote. And I've seen Kenyans living different lifestyles. When I come to Nairobi, you find people driving big cars when you go to the ground mm. somebody has nothing absolutely nothing mm. nothing ukingia kwa nyumba the only thing you can get is a, a mat maybe like in quality they sleep in mats mm. a mat for the kids to sleep and a fireplace with empty sufrias and you wonder the children are over like six and seven, six, seven children. They don't know where the meal will come from. 
people cook just ugali and and maybe there's there's nothing more mm. in in Mombasa they cut fish in very small pieces 2 centimeter pieces and sell them at 10 bob and 20 shillings some people can't afford that i'm on the ground and uh Recently, when I was going on 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 the the education, I mean the examination exercise, I I visited. I took a photo of 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 about two hundred meters queue of jerry cans mm. somewhere in 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 Kuala called Marvesa. They had no water. Mm-hmm. It rained for the first time yesterday. And this water was being brought by a donor. Mm. I don't want to say the donor maybe it will bring some maybe treatment. Robert, maybe if if, if I may ask you, Robert, yes, with all those things that you know you're highlighting, which are things that are happening yes. not just in Kuala but in very many other parts of the country. Yes, where is the problem? Is the problem in leadership? Is a problem in leaders not understanding their mandates? Is a problem in leaders not, um, you know, being uh, in resonance with what is happening on the ground because they have never experienced this? I don't want to say the problem is leadership. The problem is the environment and the culture. Kenyans lack a culture of humanity mm. and, 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 and serving their people. It, we, we cannot force parliamentarians or the... the the politicians to 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 work when actually you we can as, as actually Robert I we know can. I know I know I know we can force we can, force. Finish, we can force. Mm-hmm. I know we can force but the problem starts from me mm. am I passionate about serving can I if 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 I'm given an office by right, as Robert will 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 I will will I Will I do the roles? Will I maximize? Will I give myself? So it's about, Will I it's about the, the values of the people. It's the values of the people. Okay. Exactly. We have watered down the values of the people. We so that you. nobody has values anymore. You don't care what goes in the next door. Mm. So we find that we have a system where politicians are held captive by the political temperature, the political environment. Mm. Uh, when things go good, somebody wants to take to take credit. When things go wrong, nobody wants to take credit about it or to take the 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 crit the critic, eh? the criticism. Yeah. So so you find that people, even those who, are, who can perform, their hands are held. They're tied. Who is Robert, to get the credit? Thank you very much for your call and your contribution. So we need. You hear what the callers are saying. Um, there are those yeah. that say, okay, so yes, there's a crisis of leadership. But then there are also those who are saying, we have leaders who really don't understand the problems of the people. We have people who seek leadership, and yet those people don't really have a direct experience of the challenges that their citizens and their electorate face. Um. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Um, I think that um, all callers were correct in that there are leaders who don't understand um, the challenges that their people face. Uh, although the majority of those elected in parliament or MCAs are, are at a local level, come from a local level, and they understand. They understand those things very well, which is why people vote for them. You, you don't vote for somebody who doesn't understand you. Mm. Um, I, I guess I shall go in order. I, um, I'll, I'll, I'll speak to cha- charity. Yep. Yes. In Riru, um, it was a topic I, I was not expecting, but nevertheless, I sympathize with charity. Um, charity seems to me to be speaking from a point of pain mm. and, and a point of... Uh, maybe hopelessness, maybe she's, she's, or maybe anger. Um, I understand when she says that 
the people who don't understand uh, what it means to sleep hungry. Um, however, um, I know she's not talking about me. I don't believe she can be talking about me when we're talking about dynasties. I don't believe we can talk of Jaramogi Oginga Dinga being in detention in the worst place in this country, in Hola Camp, um, for years, and Raila Odinga following eight years in detention. I don't know if she knows the life that I've lived where I've woken up with policemen surrounding my, the home guns to my head. I don't believe she knows the flaws I've slept in, the flaws in the cells my mother herself, my siblings have slept in uh, for this country. And I don't expect her to know. But I don't believe it is correct to judge a story where, uh, where you don't know the whole story. Um, and so I would like to just leave that. Well said. That. Um, I speak, uh, I agree with Robert in Kuala. Yes, he's right. When you think he's not an elected leader, in fact, none of my close family members are elected leaders. The last time my father was elected was in 2007. Since 2013, he has not been an elected leader. Mm. And really, the, the owners cannot be on Willie <laughs> and her views. Um, to make the change. In my private capacity, yes, which goes on to the third caller who says uh, we're lacking humanity. We're lacking humanity for one another. We're lacking social responsibility. Uh, and he went on to speak of deep, deep social issues and extreme poverty that is faced in this country. And I think the question of those issues is not what really is uh, to be discussed anymore, the issue we need to be discussing is solutions. And uh, I think I've lost you. Uh, I can't hear you. No, no, we're here. We're here. So what, what would the solution then be? Well, the solutions are what I was talking about. <laughs> Leadership. Okay. So uh, how, how, do, you know, how do we get our leaders to do what they're supposed to do? Eric, I, I wish I could tell you. I am not an elected leader, but yep. I sit with elected leaders. I wish I could tell you. Um, uh, one of the things that I do in a private capacity is lobby. Mm -hmm. One of the things people can do is petition, petition parliament, petition their members of parliament, go into the parliamentary offices, uh, use political tactics to uh, uh, pressure their leaders to do the things that we're meant to do. Um, earlier this morning, I heard the you had a guest from the National Youth Council mm. um, who was just uh, speaking policy of job creation and youth, um, youth empowerment, which is just a song that has been sung for decades and decades in and out. Mm. Uh, one of the things I would do if I was in charge would, first of all, would be break down the youth commission. Uh, youth is not one homogeneous thing. Mm. To say that somebody who's just turned 18 from um, near Gulf is the same as somebody living in uh, Westlands who has a two-car household and two children that go to Kilimani Junior Primary. Mm. Uh, it, it's not the same. You have different age sets, different age groups. You have rural, urban, uh, separate um, uh, categories. And it would not be, for me, something that would be in a ministry. It wouldn't be the Ministry of Youth and Gender. Both each would be departments. Mm. It is this to this. Um, now over reliance on internet, creating more access, internet access for young people, um, more technical schools, uh, more ways to harness skills instead of just uh, policy and, mm -hmm. and um, legis uh, regulations. Mm -hmm. um, off the top of my head, I can give you those. Good ideas. I know what, what you're saying, um, Winnie, is stuff that we say on the show, is stuff that our callers say on the show all the time. I mean, it's about the quality of, of our leaders. It's about getting leaders who are willing to serve and to take pride in basically serving the people. Uh, just asking you a question. You know, people keep asking us whether we can uh, front ourselves. Let's just also ask you, would you front yourself for a political office? 
Uh, but charity told me I have no right. <laughs> uh, that was charity's uh, opinion. We now want your opinion. <laughs> can I can I use another question to ask you really quickly? The lady yes. behind you is also called Winnie. And that question, oh, yeah. in that painting behind you, right? And that question yeah. was posed to her very many times when she fought in South Africa, whether she would put herself up for public office because of the things that she fought for on a private scale. Would you see mm -hmm. yourself in that position as well? Uh, very much so. Mm. Um, in, in, in terms of Winnie Mandela, that is um, certainly my one of my North Stars uh, when it comes to service for the people. Uh, I've done it. I've always done it. I've always continued to do it. And I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Uh, and I, like I told you, I just joined the Rotary Club as we were <laughs> this morning as we were talking here as, as we were talking here i just uh, sent the form so i hope they accept you okay <laughs> thank you very much winnie thank you for joining us and thank you for speaking to us winnie is a ceo of brickhouse council she is a passionate as you've heard on matters of governance on matters of public service on matters of what the citizens should expect of their leaders so as we are facing a crisis of leadership especially in our elected leaders in parliament and i personally we agree with you a hundred percent have a good day we hope to speak with you again soon thank you very much good day guys bye-bye